So today is all about sci-fi panels and how to make them inside Houdini. The purpose of this first part of two is to deal with cutting to create an interesting hard surface look. So let's start right away. Let's make a grid and remesh it. I am using specific values because they work in my default file. Later on in part two we will customize that it works regardless of the dimensions. After the remesh let's get a divide node to make a dual mesh. That looks already cool. Let's make that bigger to get the values working. Next we will need a for each primitive loop and delete smaller parts to delete the parts we don't want to cut. Again just use the values here. For debugging purposes I use a blast where I get only a couple of prims. That way I can see immediately what's going on. Next we need another for each primitives that will loop over each one of our prims. Afterwards, we get a for each number to decide how many times we want cuts to occur. Just put the for each primitives inside the for each number. In addition, the gather method should be changed to feedback at the end of each iteration and to fetch feedback at the start. The next step is to set up a deletion of small parts for each primitive. We need to do this first, so we stop cutting the prims if they are too small for us to cut. Copy that and invert the value if you want them in the end result. Then we need our main tool, the knife, which is also a cool Swedish electronic music duo by the way. Basically, we will modify the position and direction of that knife to cut our primitives procedurally. We will position that node on the longest curve of our primitive. We will also make our own random position on that curve so we get a more interesting result. Let's merge them together and start with the position attribute. But first let's make a null and connect it to the meta import node. We will make our random values based on a couple of seeds, so we will get a very unique random value on each cut we make. Go to the parameters interface and create a float channel. Maybe clean the rest like I did and move on with a convert line node to get our individual curves and measure them. I will also get a centroid extract for the direction later on. To return to the curves, we will only promote our maximum rest length, so that we will promote the longest rest length. We will make a new attribute. Change the original class to prims, because we have the rest length on prims. The new class is detail, and we will keep the original attribute. Next we need an attribute wrangle because we will write some code. To get our maximum rest length, we first run over primitives. Then we start with our first random value that is based on the primitive number. Actually you can change that to at ptnum, because the prim number will always be zero in that case. But let's leave that for now. Next we compare the original rest length, and say if it is not equal to the max len, delete all other curves aka primitives. So next we need a blast node that keeps only one curve. This is because two or more curves can be equal, and have a max rest length. In that case, we want just one. For the random position, we need another wrangle. Firstly, we need one channel with a min and one with a max to determine what the min and max positions should be. Because sometimes a random position is too close to a point, whether it is zero or one. At least we want to control that. Next, we need another channel where we will store all the seeds that we use for our random positions. We also need another seed where we can change the outcome and have more control over the cutting positions. Next we need the positions of our points. We will use a lerp function to blend between these two positions. We'll use our ran pose for the mix bias. First let's set up a random value based on our iteration for each number with expressions. If you missed my series about expressions, I recommend them for a more in-depth understanding. It is obviously a good idea for me to watch my own tutorial since we need to specify the class here in detail. Then just copy and paste the relative reference into our RAND pose. Let's name the null accordingly. Make another one for the primitives and name that also. What I tend to do if I need to combine multiple values is create a transform node and park the attributes I need. This is so I can add multiple values to one channel. Otherwise you would just change it to the current saved value 
or you would have to write it all down, and that is, just don't. Let's copy them into the transform channels. Be careful when copying the first one. I copied the actual expression, and not the reference value. With Alt-E, we can expand that channel, and write in a more efficient manner. So we start with our first seed of the count loop, and put the rand function in. To make it easier to read, we can split the expression into rows below, and it will still work perfectly. Yeah, see, I need to change the copied value back to its reference. Now I can just copy and paste multiple expressions easily and add them together. But something is wrong here. Right, I forgot to put the node name. Now everything works nicely. Just name the wrangle better and move on. To use our min and max inputs, we have to fit in the random values we get. Fit01 is perfect for that. It assumes that the processed values are already clamped between 0 and 1, and we just need to specify the new min and max outputs like that. We use our transform cheat like before. That's fantastic. Now we can clamp the values to a range we like. To illustrate better what we did, I added a point to that position. And I am failing again here, of course. Just change the lerp values to pause 1 and pause 2, and let the wrangle run over detail to get only one point. Perfect. Our position is changing within our range of min and max. Now let's clean up our node, add an attribute to call it later, and delete the add point. Let's now take a look at the direction in which we'll cut. First, we need a polyframe to get some normals we can work with. And because it's so much fun, let's bring another attribute wrangle. I promise it will be the last one for this part. So basically, we need to rotate our normal in a specific direction, and we would like to have at least some control over how much the normal should rotate. To get the look we want, I stick with 45 and 90 degrees. In other words, we want to rotate 45 degree 50% of the time, and 90 degree the other 50%. Additionally, we need to specify the axis around which it will rotate. A float for 45 degrees, and one for 90 degrees. Next, we will need to create a random value that we will copy from our position with some changes, and a seed that we can control. So let's get started. But before that, we need normals on our centroid, and we can grab them from our primitive. Then we just copy them over instead of transferring them because we don't want to rely on the distance to our centroid. Now let's start writing. We make four vectors, three for the axis, and one up vector that we are likely to use for the DRY. Probably it's redundant at this point. Doesn't matter. It will work. Trust me. Let's normalize the normal for x, normalize the up for y, and normalize the cross product of these two. If you don't know what a cross product is, I recommend watching some tutorials from Entagma, for instance. They have an excellent explanation. Perfect. Let's create the attributes directly so we can visualize them and see if everything works fine. Let's change the colors so we can identify the axis in their own colors. Cool. Everything works. Now change everything back to variables and give them their own attributes to make our lives a bit easier in the end. Now we need our degree channels. Oops, sorry for that. Next we need our RAN direction channel. And we make an if statement that if the RAN cut is smaller, that point 0.5 that we rotate 45 degree and else we stick with the 90. To actually rotate, we must have a vector 4 that holds our angle, but converted to radians, and that converted to quaternions. This is because we need an axis to rotate around, and that is our initial up vector. Again, heavy topic that I am not qualified to explain in detail, but it works. Now we only need to actually rotate our normal with the rot value. We will need the same for the other 90 degrees. Only thing is to not change the 90 degrees, and keep the zero in that channel. Lastly, we need randomness. 
For that, just grab the super long expression from our cut pose and change its seed value and the wrangle name. Done. Almost. So back to our knife node, we now only need to call our attributes that we made for the position and direction. Change the attribute element at the end, and repeat that for the direction as well. Just a bit of cleaning up here. And don't forget to add the point number after the node name because we need our points numbers, right? And the final bit is to change that lovely angle from 90 to 0 to round this up. Awesome, we made it. Now we can control the angle, direction, seed, everything and have random cuts on each primitive. Next week we will tackle the additional fancy elements like side cuts and holes and much more. See you next time.